Hi, welcome to The Point of View. This is your favorite current affairs show on television and you're live on City TV. My name is Bernard Avila. Here on The Point of View, we get the right guests. We ask them the relevant questions and you learn some useful things. It's live and interactive. If you're watching on TV, send us your comments and questions for our special guest today by the WhatsApp number on the screen. If you're watching on Facebook as well, we're happy for you to contribute to the show. We'll read some of your comments. It's a big interview tonight, a conversation with the Minister for Finance. When we come back, I will tell you how we'll proceed. Stay tuned. So the Minister of Finance, Ken Ofreata, is in, in the house. Uh, he's wearing his usual white. Ken, great to have you. Good Thank evening. Thank you. It's good to be here. Somebody wanted me to ask you what determines your, col your choice of color. Is it your mood? Is it where the economy is? <laughs> Actually, um, it, 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 I guess it's been white most of the time. And this is from uh, Ecclesiastes 9, okay. 8 to 9, which says, you know, enjoy life, anoint your head, okay. wear white, and love your wife. <laughs> <laughs> and you do all. And I think it's really just to, mm. to, 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 to realize um, favor that God has given you and to be grateful mm. at all times to celebrate it. I started wearing... Um, black once a week okay. as my sign of an ash cloth to, okay. um, to realize the enormity of the situation, sometimes the mistakes we make mm. uh, and how to, you know, confess to the Lord and, and I see. pray for our country. I, I see. So where are we? Where are we in the... Where, where are, are we? we? This is um, October 2019. October uh, thirty. So 30, 2019. Yeah. Um, and Bernard, where were we? January 2017. Mm. Um, I, I think, you know, um, all of us as Ghanaians uh, may be breathing a bit of a sigh of relief because my feeling is the headwinds that we all experience um, um, through 2016 and 2017, when Akufuado's government started, um, were periods of despondency and maybe even a bit ashamed of ourselves in our inside. Mm. And because the margin of victory um, that uh, President Akufuado had was um, unprecedented. Mm. Um, so I think there was a deep cry um, that we really should, should get a sense of decency back uh -huh. And that we can do better than than what we are we are doing, and 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 my feeling, um, at least from the numbers, um, is that we, we've come a long way, with regards to macro stability, um, some infrastructure work, the free senior high school, food, um, etc. So, um, I think we are doing well, but it's um, it's still quite a bit fragile, mm. uh, what we have, and and you feel like. Uh, you are kind of at the tipping point. Mm. And, and the real um, last best of strength that we need will be for 2022 to prove to ourselves mm. uh, that truly um, the excesses of past election cycles uh, mm. will not befall us. Um, uh, and how do we then mobilize all of us as Ghanaians to ensure mm. that that does not happen? Ordinary people say they can't feel it. In yeah. terms of, there's no money, right? Like, like you, you get people randomly calling, and asking you what's going on. Yeah. Uh, some say they've lost their jobs yeah. after the banking thing. Yeah. And I don't know what feelers you have for what we call the real economy, mm. because we can talk a lot about the numbers mm. and the macro. Right. But I'm sure you visit markets, you mm -hmm. go to funerals, yeah. you meet people. Yeah. Don't you get that impression that people sort of feel there's I things do. are tight? Yeah, I, I, I do. Um, the question, you know, that one asks oneself is if one had allowed um, the, the infrastructure or the lack of infrastructure or the systems that we had in 2016 through now, where would we be? Mm. Um, so obviously... In these changes, um, either banking sector or energy or arrears that we are having to pay uh, will lead to some contraction. Mm. Uh, and more importantly, maybe the old way of doing business, um, sort of um, leakages are plugged to a certain degree, and, and that creates you know, a change of that. 
But genuinely, there will also be collateral damage, okay, where people are despondent and maybe they've lost a job or so. Uh, but once one compares it to, you know, maybe about three, four million depositors mm -hmm. all losing their money and being in the streets, um, road contractors not being paid at all, um, mm -hmm. one will begin to see that the whole issue of transformation and development, yes, uh, mm -hmm. there are some difficulties. Our, our hope is that if we look at uh, the broad areas of education and maybe even healthcare um, and stability in sort of electricity, etc., mm -hmm. that you know something is, is do, touching somebody. Do you, do you somebody. agree with those who say it's taking too long? Let me give you two examples. So okay. the banking thing started in August 2017. Right. We're in October 2019, mm -hmm. and even though yes, we have banks now stable yeah the some a lot of people have not been paid mm -hmm. still mm -hmm. the, the receiver is still working mm -hmm. his way around mm -hmm. things people's monies have been locked up in places yeah. so there's still a lot of liquidity Ants. crunch yeah. on the consumer mm -hmm. side then you've also had people who are looking for no work they can't get work yeah. the numbers of those who have lost jobs could be anything between three to five thousand it could be more it could be less we don't know mm -hmm. and I remember an interview a, a friend journalist had with one of the former directors who said, if we had thought about the effect of the way we went, we could have saved a few more jobs instead of sort of letting the banks coalesce into just mm -hmm. one or two. Mm -hmm. So no. it's been two years and two months. Mm -hmm. What do I say to that? Yes. Um, I think, you know, in the same way in which you say we've lost some um, two to um, 3,000 jobs, and, and that's difficult because mm. one, one sense of worth is always in, in finding a job. The same way you can say that, well, you know, they created 100,000 jobs of NAPCOR. Now, that, that is something that has never done in our history, mm. you know. So, yes, it, it is true. And, and, and our hope is that we'll create jobs to, to absorb those. Um, but it couldn't be that with a level of 12 or 15 billion odd uh, financing um, to restructure the banking sector, that we won't have, you know, that we won't have made some mistakes uh, and or uh, have some collateral damage or with people. Uh, but truly, uh, when you see private sector credit gone up, the banks feeling a lot healthier and more confident and comfortable with themselves. Um, I think the chassis mm. uh, is being built and, and it's, it's really uh, up to the people of Ghana to give us another term um, to complete this. So let, let's talk about some numbers. Yeah. End of July, our stock market, and you, you are one of the people who helped to start the stock market, so mm -hmm. you know more about this than most. Our stock market hit a 21-month low. Mm -hmm. um, investors, we are told, sold shares to free up cash as they were and certain about where the banking reform would come to. Mm -hmm. And even with that low, prices coming to that very low price, you, you haven't seen people respond by taking up these shares. Mm -hmm. Isn't that a clue of where we are? Uh, yes, you can say growth has been this and that, but if your stock market is at an almost, I don't, I mean, almost yeah. two year low, yeah. that should say something about sentiment of the market, doesn't it? It could. It could, it could. I mean, what, what, um, what do I say we invest for, uh, but for periods such as this? Uh, and if there's a, there's a general contagion um, because of what we are doing um, to sanitize the market, yeah, that should be expected. The question really to us is what are we doing about now um, 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 strengthening uh, the private sector? Um, so that that will pick up. What are we doing about the issue of confidence that people feel secure about the you know macro prudential numbers um, mm. so that people come back? Um, but but I, I think in an economic cycle or in a restructuring as we have done, um, those are not unexpected, you know. And um, um, I think we still have. Um, the, the lack of the draw. We are a very blessed country. I was in Philippines and um, I, I was privileged to ring the Manila Stock Exchange bell. 
Mm. And that day, I think the market went up about two percentage points or so. So Ghana has still got it in us. And um, we we'll have that type but of aren't magic you, happening. As, as a stock market man, aren't you worried that as of the time we checked, the performance of our stock market was only better than Argentina and Zambia? Yeah. That's pretty perilous company. Stop, stop, stop. <laughs> the whole world, yeah. apart from Argentina and Zambia, yeah. our stock market was the worst performing. Right. That, that, that can be. It, it can be, but um, I mean, I. So I went through the, the 80s and early 90s in, in the U.S., mm -hmm. uh, the Black Friday in which the market just completely tanked, you know, for reasons or the other. Mm -hmm. um, and it, it rejuvenated, you know. So, so, when, you know, is, when, so when is your prediction? When, so, when will the stock market pick up? You know, my... my in response I to your mean, nice I, macro I, numbers. I guess, you know, <laughs> my sense is that, you know, um, if we... Um, stay true to the fiscal consolidation course and, and, and manage ourselves properly. Mm. Uh, confidence will, will rebound if we more liquidity comes through the banking sector. Mm. You know, how do you ease to feel that like, oh, I can finally see the sun mm. and therefore I can I can begin to to work in a normal way and mm. look into the future. Okay, so let's go. You said we are in Ghana beyond it. We've all agreed. President has championed it. That means we must raise internal resources. As of end of July this year, mm -hmm. our revenue had a shortfall of five billion cities. Mm -hmm. I mean, what's going on? Tough times, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> you know, that, that. Maybe you and I are not paying the taxes that we should be paying, or maybe I was too, I was too optimistic <laughs> with regards to uh, my revenue projections um, that I did. Uh, but be that as it may, you know, I think revenues uh, have gone up uh, on average, you know, north of 15 um, to 20 percent each year since 2017. And even in these, in these doldrums, uh, I think we are up maybe about 11 percent compared to last year. But we are certainly missing our targets and we need to do something about that. I think that is clear um, to, to all of us with the new leadership that we have brought um, to, um, to, to GRA. And uh, we, we truly are expecting um, great things from, um, from the people that we have put A few months ago when I interviewed you about revenue, you promised me that you are going to get NAPCO guys to yeah. come and work to help collect revenue. You said 10,000 NAPCO guys were yeah, going to help a great memory. to shore up revenue. Yeah. So those 10,000 guys have been employed, presumably, and yet yeah. we're still not meeting our target. Was that a wrong yes. strategy? Is, did you... Because I, I think not, that I I'm thought not, the was sure. that you wanted them to go out there yeah. to places that mm -hmm. the... I, I'm not sure. No, no, it's not the wrong strategy. I'm not sure the strategy was, was implemented the way that we wanted it to implement, and that's why the change of leadership has occurred. Um, because, I mean, I have an enduring belief in the capacity of our young people to, um, to, to, to really participate in the reconstruction of this economy. And, and giving 10,000 people a chance, um, I, I think we'll reap, we'll reap those results. So, who is, so you've changed leadership so that the strategy of getting the tax collected will work? Yes. But while you are lacking the revenue, you are mm -hmm. giving, what do you call it, tax uh, exemptions. exemptions. The president said in 2018, we give tax exemptions of $2.4 billion. Mm -hmm. If you multiply that by five, <laughs> that's almost like the amount of money you're using to save the bank. You are granting tax exemptions to foreign companies and individuals to the tune of $2.4 billion. billion. And this is 2018. Mm -hmm. Why are you doing that? I mean, how do you get tax exemptions? I mean, typically, if you go through um, these um, sort of loan agreements, um, which are really agreements of um, export credit agencies in mm. foreign countries, either they are coming to, to build roads or, you know, hospitals or um, factories or whatever. Mm -hmm. um, so the, the question... You know, in a sense, we need to do something about restructuring of our exemptions. No question about that. And uh, make it tighter uh, and, and actually seek to, to reduce it. And so that, that is going to work. 
Uh, but truly, for example, if uh, the Japanese government gives you a grant and they are going to then be bringing in equipment to, let's say, help reconstruct Noguchi or something, mm -hmm. um, you really are not going to be taxing them for the equipment that they bring into, into your country. Um, mm. to execute a job that you have. Um, so, it, so it's a balance that, that we have to, and there may be some excesses in it, because, uh, and that, that we have to work. But we are in an era of Ghana beyond aid. So when people bring investment, mm -hmm. I mean, should they expect... Uh, th I mean, this is... I mean, I, I don't, sorry if I keep making... The figure is yeah. really large, $2.4 billion. Dollars. But what, what does it mean in terms of how much money came in for that? Well, when the president said this, he, he did not juxtapose this yeah. with the numbers so, that I mean, typically, these investments brought. So I'm presuming that he's yeah. not happy as well. No, no, no. <laughs> we are all not happy. And we actually uh, have, um, have rewritten um, the exemptions code and, mm. and are reviewing it again mm. um, to make sure that we, we tighten it. Because there's, there's also, you know, um, some literature to suggest that you know the, the the value of exemptions and or tax holidays are not the first thing that in, um, foreign investors look at to come into one's country. Mm. Okay, so so that is also guiding us in how uh, we, we look at this. But those are all part of the structural changes that are necessary mm. for us to be efficient. And the question also would be, even the average person, you know, uh, how do I get to uh, Bernard Avila Jr. Um, for for him to to pay uh, mm. his taxes, um, so that we all feel that responsibility. Because I, I think, you know, we should move into an era where the average citizen, mm -hmm. you know, is also one who cares about the public purse. You know, where we are, quote mm. unquote, um, our brothers keepers or our tax keepers, all of us, okay. um, to make sure that the resources we require to build the nation, you know, are gathered. Um, but tax exemptions are one of the Achilles heels and a variety of other places of okay. uh, sort of gold receipts going out. Um, I think I was speaking to the Swiss ambassador today, looking at the numbers in which $1.6 billion worth of gold um, yep. is recorded mm -hmm. in, in Switzerland. Uh, and nowhere near close of that is recorded, it's recorded here in Ghana. And that's both India, Dubai, and Switzerland. So those are all areas that are now being interrogated with regards to exchange of information mm. and therefore tracking. Um, so when we say that our revenue to GDP is maybe 12.5% uh, and it should be 20, mm. so it means that if we are getting some, you know, 57 or let's say 50 billion. Mm. Uh, it literally means that we could be getting um, another 25 billion um, okay. to do that. This is the point of view. We're having a conversation with Minister of Finance, Ken Furiata, and um, we, we are just warming up actually because contractors have been calling us since we advertised this program that we should ask the finance minister when the money will hit the account. Mm. Incidentally, today is interesting for four reasons. As I said, today is exactly six months since we left IMF, April 30. Is. Today is the day before the end of the month when the money you paid, the 2.2, is supposed to hit their account. Okay. So they are waiting for this. Today is also the day before the U.S. government's deadline for you to restore PDS, if you may, in the letter they wrote to you. Yes, and of course, to, and today is two weeks before your, your final budget. So it's an auspicious day. When we come back, <laughs> I'll ask you about the roads. People want roads. Contractors say they are dying. Some are committing suicide. The power people to say you have to pay. We'll discuss all of that when we come back. Send us your comments. We are talking to the finance minister. We'll be right back. Welcome back. This is the point of view. We're having a conversation with Minister of Finance. Two weeks before he reads the budget for the final year of President Akufuado's um, I don't know if it's his first term. If you get a second term, you will decide. <laughs> so it's a serious budget. He's given us answers to many things. Let's talk about roads. So I have here with me yeah. the 2019 budget. On page 146, you say <laughs> some pretty serious things. Paragraph 723. You said you would, the Ministry of Roads will undertake 11,000 kilometers, 25,000 kilometers, and 6,400 kilometers of routine maintenance. When you put the figures together, you will do maintenance of almost 42,600 kilometers of roads. People want me to ask you, where did you do those maintenances? Because the roads 
<laughs> look pretty bad. <laughs> um, that's question one. And then question two, you listed a lot of roads you are going to do. Paragraph 726. In this paragraph, the only road that's actually started of the ones you said you would do is the Kumasi Road Drainage Extension and the Pokwasi Interchange. Mm -hmm. In Sawama Pejwa, Kwafukrom Apejwa, nothing has happened since you read this. Boga Boku Parkoman, we don't know if any work has started. We heard right. of some deal signed. In Kwanta Otida Manko, nothing. Brekum Sekwa, nothing. In Chidadiaso, nothing. Dualization of whole, nothing. Construction of whole bypass. Am I misunderstanding the budget? Or is when you say you do something, should I expect you to do it within the year? Or you are just telling me what you hope will mm -hmm. happen? So we should just pray. No, no, no. Um, good one. Um, prayers have to go with some action on it. I mean, we have, um, as you know, I think it was in September um, that we um, we issued a multi-year commencement of mm -hmm. some seven um, point nine billion um, or so. Um, so. So that has been done, and we expect where to go um, on from there. Uh, but, but as you know, you know, we, we also, I mean, I think, you know, if you look at um, the government, I remember, you know, when President Kufu, um came in, it was 39,000 um, kilometers, kilometers of yes. roads. And by the time he was finished um, of his second term, it was 69,000, meaning some 30,000 um, kilometers of road were done. Um, and then the, the following eight years, um, my numbers indicate that 3,000 uh, kilometers were I'm sure there. the Green Book would dispute uh, that. Uh, well, <laughs> yeah, the, the, the authenticity of the Green Book. Okay. So we have 74,000 so, kilometers so, now. So that's, that's where we, we were. Um, now, and, and then you, 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 you then, you know, are quite clear on why um, these roads are the state in which, in which they are in. Um, and I'm not sure, I mean, this, the, these two months, um, what, what we have done um, with regards um, to, to, to roads in terms of government of Ghana, you know, some 1.6 billion um, that we are doing, in which, you know, 80% um, um, of, of the contractors um, will be paid and are being paid, not, you know. Uh, and then on the road fund, another 1.2 billion, about 400. Um, 1,490 or so contractors, um, of which uh, at least 82% of them who are about under a million CDs are all going to be paid, while the balance of 40% or so. Uh, and that's so going to be? No, they've, they've started. The program is on. And, and people are, are getting their, their monies. You know, when, so when did payments start? The payments started maybe a couple of weeks ago. You know, I know, I know we affected that uh, mm. before I traveled to, to Washington. So you expect, you, you owe 1,730 contractors. Yeah. How many of them will be paid by close of tomorrow, which is the end of October? Well, really, um, I would imagine about 80, 82% of them, because most of those are under, um, for um, government of Ghana, under 5 million CDs, and they will get paid. And for the road fund, you know, I think under 500,000 or so. So, they so 80% of the 1,730 will be paid will be by... Paid. But what percentage of the 3.9 billion? Because you owe them almost 4 billion CDs. Right. So in terms of value, what well, I, I, what, be what, what I've been able to do was 1.2 uh, billion for road fund and 1.6 uh, billion um, um, for, for government. For GOG. For GOG. Um, at least. So that will go a long way. So that's 2.8. And, and what does that do? Um, that, in effect, um, goes to bring some liquidity in the sector. The construction um, can begin, you know, to, 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 but, to but be accelerated. But we are told this doesn't include interest. So if I owe a bank from 2016 and you are paying me in October 2019, three years late, and you are not paying my accrued interest, how am I supposed to go back to work? Um, uh, I'm not sure that is um, totally true um, because the IPCs I have seen uh, are IPCs uh, that uh, um, that we are then paying. Um, so um, that's interim payment certificate. Yeah, 
But 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 why do you admit that? As to as to how they funded it for some of them, it's been 2016. But but Bernard, what we have also realized, and I guess your testimony is that, is that presumably contractors have always felt um, that the government does not pay on time and therefore um, load up in the pricing anyway. Mm. Um, so then to pretend that is the interest, that it's not, it's not yeah, quite there. Uh, but, but be that as it may, Bernard, you know, um, there's the issue of um, legacy um, payments that we are doing very well, you know, um, um, to pay and really sort of looking to rejuvenate um, so that through... How do you respond to the accusation that when you came into office in 2017, yeah. for some reason, you cancelled a lot of the, <clears throat> or suspended, I don't know what the word is cancelled or suspended, mm -hmm. a lot of the road contracts mm -hmm. and did not pay people for over two years, mm -hmm. hoping to either reprofile or... Risk uh, cope. Uh, uh, no, the word was risk cope. Some of the road projects. It was a risk cope. Yes, and also authentic. Yes, and then for, for, for the cocoa roads, you said you were doing auditing. Right. You haven't published what you found as to whether, for example, there was some malfeasance in the award right. of the quantity right. of contracts, mm -hmm. and it's been two and a half years. Yeah. Okay, for for us with these areas, um, cocoa board they, they did their own analysis, and I think they've 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 come to resolutions as to how they are solving that. And for us, all of those areas, you know, the Auditor General was the mm. one who went through that uh, and determined, therefore, the level of areas that, that were due to us. Um, I think uh, he, he put some people up for prosecution also. Um, uh, but, you know, and, and then we have begun paying and begun building. But I think what, what we, should, we should really realize is that the quantum, I'm not sure it's ever been done you know, in, in, in our history, that, you know, within these two, three months or so, so much is being put into the road sector. But you haven't know, you left in, it too little, too this, late? This because I for two years, you're not paying anything. Okay, but what, what do you, at the same time, I think you are the first one who recognize how much we're also paying to keep the lights on. You are also the one who recognize how much we are doing for senior high school. You also recognize how much we're doing to make sure that Four million depositors did not all lose their money. Um, I understand so, that. But, so, but, so we do to make choices. If you, don't, if you right? don't pay for road for two years, mm -hmm. that means that the infrastructure deteriorates, that you may have to spend more if to they, get it back into they, shape. Indeed, the reason. But the question, though, is that would you want me to pay something that I haven't authenticated? But did it, that, did it have to take you three years to authenticate? The, 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 the may, veracity may, may, of the contract. May, maybe not, maybe not. But it's not in, in an environment in which nothing was being done in other areas, you know. So, you know, we, we had our schools going, we had the financial sector restructuring going, we have the energy sector going. This because is what this has done is it's built a lot of, I mean, if you, if you checked road demonstration, Google it for Ghana, I think every week there's been a demonstration about roads Partially because for over two years, nothing was happening on the road sector in mm -hmm. terms of physical uh, infrastructure right. addition. So mm -hmm. in retrospect, was it worth all the hassle? We're going to rescope, we're going to audit, and now you've had, had to pay almost two point something billion in I two months, whereas you could have spread it. If you had it. So you didn't have money. Was that a reason? Well, you know that we didn't have money. You, so know, you, 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 you know we met a budget deficit of what? 9.3%. You can't get away from the numbers. Yeah, but if you and, don't have and, money, and why you are you saying you are risk coping and you are, yeah. you are auditing? Why because you, you, had to, you, you, you had to authenticate whether they were right or not. But as to me declaring that I don't have money, every Ghanaian knew that we were broke when we came into power. And it's quite a miracle. So what percentage of the contracts that NDC <laughs> awarded did you... Have, did you um, abrogate and you val validly so uh, I, I can't give you those numbers, but I'm sure. How much you have know, you saved us I'm sure. from your risk coping? Oh, I'm sure billions of CDs. No, I mean, you're numbers. You <laughs> because you told me <laughs> last time you came here how much you saved us from procurement. You said it in the budget uh, you read I did. in April. I had, I had, and you were I quite clear. The you, you mentioned the exact amount. Yeah. So if you were to tell us what two and a half years of risk coping and auditing of road projects saved Ghana. Bernard, I wouldn't give you a number and come back at it. Yeah. You don't have the number. Mm -hmm. Okay, whilst we are solving, you are talking about roads. I have a, yeah. a pre-statement here from two days ago. 
the Chamber of Independent Power Producers say that uh, they, they wrote the statement, they said ECG stroke GOG. ECG stroke GOG. <laughs> GOG. <laughs> Paragraph 4. The cumulative outstanding debt position of GOG ECG to IPPs alone has escalated to about $1.5 billion. The SIPBID is once again compelled to ask that payment of obligations of GOG stroke ECG be made as a matter of urgency. Are these the numbers you're working with? Does ECG stroke GOG owe these, and then their names are here, so known as Sogli, Send Power, Car Power Ship, Senate, mm -hmm. AXA, BXC, mm -hmm. Mi Energy, Trojan, Eli Power, Enclave, Amandi, Upwind, Cox, Crisport, B5. Do you owe these people we, 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 we actually owe, um, uh, owe them, and um, you know, part of um, uh, the whole restructuring and the take or pay exercises. I think, was it two, three days ago that I inaugurated a steering yeah. committee um, to really sit down and look at um, our IPPs? IPPs, Bernard, are contracts that we have given, which means that. We technically are going to be in a marriage for some 20, 25 years, given the concessions that, that we have given. Mm -hmm. um, and really, the, the question is, if we are not um, able um, to, to pay um, these take or pay contracts, you know, we have a, an installed capacity of some 5,083 megawatts mm -hmm. and maybe um, dependable of maybe um, 4,500 um, or so um, megawatt, maybe for the 600 megawatts, mm -hmm. and um, peak peak demand of some 2,700 megawatts, mm -hmm. um, and uh, and we have to pay um, for 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 this difference um, in dispatch. Um, so the question, and and if we, I th I think we will grow to maybe approximately 1.3 billion. Um, dollars annually that mm -hmm. we have to pay and per the economic um, the energy sector um, reform um, program report that we did um, this can escalate to about 12.5 billion dollars a year by 2023 mm. um, so yes we, we do owe and 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 the the, the boldness of, of the government was to say look you know we are all going to be here for this length of time let us see what uh, assets revenue we have mm. and find a way and for us to spread this. So that look, we look can at the statement, this it. issue suggests that they were getting paid up to 80% of their invoices until PDS took over. And in fact, they seem to suggest that it was, for some reason, P, when PDS took over ECG, the, the regularity of payments... Froze. I'm not sure mm. if you have that information, whether this is correct. Mm. But this is the suggestion. The so they are happy PDS? Is no, they, they are not yeah, going as far as saying that. But I'm just asking. <laughs> because don't forget that some of these debts predate your coming into office. Right. So there was some sort of arrangement right. in the past. But mm. they're saying that the payments stalled in, yeah, the, in the past year I, or so. Th there was clearly, I mean, PDS um, took over, uh, I think, March 1st yes. um, this year. And then uh, I know it took some transition periods as conditions president and subsequent were being ironed out. Uh -huh. um, so it, it, might, it might have happened. Uh, but I think it's literally got sorted out and then this interregnum, you know, has come. Um, so we'll see. But the, the, the challenge um, for us, um, Bernard, is, is how do we create an environment that is sustainable and fair for all and ensure um, that the electricity energy ecosystem mm. um, is stable um, going going forward. And, and that is what we, we are doing. Uh, I think we'll come um, to some good successful end and, and everything is on the table. They, they really want me to get some assurance from you because when yes. they heard I was going to interview, they asked me to specifically ask you. They said they provide they provide about 60% of our total generation in Ghana. Okay. And they're saying that la the situation is unsustainable. If you don't get paid, okay. they may ha have to stop producing. Right. And I believe you don't want us to go back to doom so. No, we don't. So even though they've not explicitly said it, yeah. implicit in the statement is that mm -hmm. if payments don't happen immediately mm. or fairly soon, yeah. we would have to compromise mm. some of our generation. So when are you going to pay them? 
Um, so I think there's a discussion going on, but we pay something every month. You know, there's no question about that. You know, really? as to whether that is completely adequate or not, that's a different story. And that story is different because when you begin to pay six hundred million dollars to a billion dollars of energy you don't use, you have reason to sit down for us to have a discussion. A discussion which says that is this fair to to us as users? Is that the right way to do it? I mean, this will not be the first time that um, workouts are being done or things are being reconstructed. And, and, and I think the conversations we have had so far have been pretty upfront, blunt, and honest. So you're referring future. to cancelling the tick or pay? Because see, when you say we produce energy we don't use, I recall the president two weeks ago said mm -hmm. that we were uh, beginning to export power. I believe he said this. If I I'm, mean, if I'm, if, I'm, if I'm not mistaken. Let me, let me, let me, I mean, let me paint the scene. So Ghana, we, we are complaining that we have generation capacity of 5,083 mm -hmm. and our peak is 2,700 mm -hmm. and therefore uh, potentially paying a billion dollars a year of power you don't use. Then you now begin to look into the future and say, look, we want to be a regional hub. So there's potential for evacuation of power you know, to our neighboring countries. Mm. Uh, there's potential for, for this country to be a regional hub and therefore the usage through um, the aluminum bauxite that we are thinking of, etc. Mm -hmm. um, but these are the low periods, you know. So let's be clear that this country has a great future in which its consumption will, will occur. How do we move, you know, to that level um, so that everybody is happy? And that, that's really the narrative uh, that we want um, these IPPs to be our partners uh, into, into the future. Uh, and they should participate uh, in what we want to do. But I mean, it's the same issue of, you know, uh, restructuring of the banks and then um, having some difficulties and sacrifices for others. And, and that's essentially where we are. But if we don't reconstruct this, this, this arrangement, um, I don't think we are going to be a happy lot. Will, will the idea of being a hub for power in West Africa not be compromised by what has happened with PDS? Because How so? we, we got the impression from s some of the communication initially from the MCC to you that if by tomorrow, and this was in, <laughs> at the time you didn't restore PDS, number one... By would, tomorrow... Yeah, because in the letter they said by August, end of October. So I'm, I'm just using that because this, this, this communication was in the middle of uh, mm. 18th October. How do, that you, it, how do you get these letters? I, I will actually show them to you. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I didn't say you don't have that. So how do you get them? <laughs> no, we, we, have, we have it. So this is the letter. Um, so maybe uh, you can put this up. If for, so basically the action items was that if we didn't formally announce the statement of PDS concession rights under the transaction agreement, by October 30, which is today. Mm -hmm. uh, Who is this? Uh, this is Kim Che, K Y E. K. Kim K, yeah. Mm -hmm. If that we didn't reinstate PDS by today, of course, this was dated 18, written to you. Mm -hmm. Release of MIDA, release to MIDA of Tranche 2 funding, which is the 190 million, right. would not happen. That's correct. And that also, they would not authorize the resumption of activities towards development of a regional compact involving Ghana, right. which I presume feeds into what you just said about... Evacuation of power. Yes, so, okay. and clearly your, your communication to us a few days after this showed that you were not going to reinstate PDS. And I'm, I'll let you explain that. But mm -hmm. I just wanted to start with this point of... So aren't we compromising this I, idea of a third compact, the regional compact, where mm -hmm. Ghana would be the hub of power for West Africa? with yeah. support from the American government. Okay. Does your PDS decision, cancelling the concession, not compromise that? Uh, okay, I mean, the, your contention is without America, Ghana can't do anything? No, that's not, you are, that's your interpretation. <laughs> I'm asking, actually. <laughs> no, I'm asking you whether it will not compromise, so you have to tell us whether you have an alternative plan. We should have an alternative. Look, I mean, yeah, um, it's almost like you better not get independence because you can't manage yourself or something. Uh, but, but really, you know, I mean, 
our relationship with America, Bernard, you know, if you look at um, Eisenhower investing um, through Nkrumah in Akosumbo, I mean, it was such a visionary thing, which in my mind is actually uh, part of the core of the reason why we are such a stable democracy. Uh, be because very early on, between um, opening up education for everybody mm -hmm. and then, quote unquote, bringing light to everybody, I think a sense of unity was built. And that investment really cemented our relationship with the U.S. And for 60 years, you know, this dam has been at the heart of, of who we are. So, so there's no question, you know, about um, th this relationship with America. But in any relationship, there will come a time of departure. And where is the point of departure? It's because of an interpretation, you know, of events. Mm -hmm. um, and that's, that's okay. I mean, I, I think that that's healthy. But what does that mean? It means that America uh, potentially does not get to use Ghana to evacuate the power. Because mm -hmm. I think we are the best place to get, to get it done. And then we also do not get 190 million. But the relationship is much stronger than that. And, and, and I suspect this too will pass and, and will go on um, to be great partners. But, but, but I think, you know, if they deeply believed in the interpretation and we also deeply believed in it, you know, then they, they did what uh, as a sovereign would do. And we also did. But that should not matter. I think it was Kennedy who said, um, something about, you know, don't let the past rule you and don't let the, pres the mm. present rule you, but look to the future. And so the two of us will look to the future. Mm. I suspect we'll, we'll, we'll come back to other things that we can invest in. Uh, because I still feel we are the pillar of stability mm -hmm. in the region. And uh, with um, the successful um, agreement for the uh, continental free trade to be in this country, just the whole issue of trade facilitation and investment mm. is going to be helped here. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and, you know, Mr. Grant, of course, has been doing a lot of work for Ghana on branding, etc. And, and that really, for me, is, is where um, uh, the, the new mandate should be. How are we now moving from a stable economy into creating a business environment which can cascade in okay. the appropriate inward investment. I, I, I will take a short break. And viewers, I need to say that we will go beyond the simulated time because I feel it's important for the minister to explain the reasoning behind government's decision on PDS. So we will hear from him on PDS properly when we come back. We've received a lot of your comments and questions. So what I'll do with, with those questions is to do rapid fire Q and A. So I'm not gonna just gonna ask him and you answer in short, short bits. So we're gonna go till half past the hour. This is the point of view. Our guest is Minister of Finance, uh, Mr. Keno Furiata. Stay with us. Welcome back to the point of view. Our guest is Finance Minister Keno Furiata. We are trying to get a sense of a lot of things at the same time. We've spoken about the road sector. Contractors have sent comments. We said a, uh, said a few things about the power sector. But but PDS was really major. And I know it must have been complicated for you because you studied in the U.S., you worked in the U.S., you are an Aspen fellow and all of that. So you are, you are pretty clear the way the American system works. Right. Now, it was pretty clear from some of the communication we've seen that the Americans didn't want you or Ghana to cancel the concession. Right. Why did government feel so strongly that the lack of a guarantee, bank and insurance guarantee, made the position of PDS completely untenable. Mm. Why did you feel so strongly about that? Poof. Um, Bernard, I mean, I think this is kind of water under the bridge, but, you know, I mean, be that as it may, um, as we, as at the date of cancellation, which was when October, what, 19th or something? Yes. Um, we still did not have a valid guarantee in place, i.e., Assuming that was it July 30th or 29th mm -hmm. when um, this occurred, uh, there clearly was enough time to cure it. I mean, it was a suspension, mm -hmm. you know, and then uh, another 30 days uh, suspension. Um, and we still didn't. But, but what you had, uh, Bernard, is $3 billion of a national asset in play. Mm -hmm. Okay, you've gone through uh, your procurement uh, and, and that. 
And, and when a mistake is made or um, a partner is seen not to have the capacity to do it, mm -hmm. you do what you must do. You know, it's $3 billion of your um, electricity operations, you know, you know under uh, the stewardship um, of a company that could not in our mind, did not in our mind, produce the appropriate um, standby letters of credit or demand guarantee, and 60 days odd after even the suspension was still unable to do that. Okay, so, uh, you know, it, it, it's, you, you ask yourself, you know, what, and that's at the beginning of a 20-year marriage. Mm. Okay, mm. so w what does a responsible government do? Um, so you may be comparing what 190 million to $3 billion of asset of a strategic national asset. You have to make some bold decisions at that time. And I think people should understand that. Well, I, I, I think you alluded to, um, to maybe, well, um, there were some other reasons other than that. And I, I say, look, I think I wrote um, a letter um, to Mr. Kutwampa at some point yes. um, in which the president had really fought very hard for us to move from a 20% shareholding to 51% shareholding. Yes. And, you know, so the deal was done. And I'm sitting in my office, I may have to think through things, and I'm wondering, so what if each individual you know, decides not to vote one way, even though they are 51% Ghanaian, then you, you really um, um, sort of compromise the mm. whole issue of control. And so my suggestion um, then was that, look, let an SPV be formed so that we know very clearly that the 51% is always unitary and would vote in the way in which the issues of governance and control will not be compromised. Um, and also, hopefully, um, to ensure that transfers are always to Ghanaians. Um, so so I, I think that... that, that so for you, that was to end. consummate the movement from 20 to 51, because when you came into office, it was 20 for us. Yeah. President says we want majority. Yeah. So when for, these, for a reason. Yes, yeah. and so when these four guys came together, Santa Baron, GTS, TBK, TG Energy, you didn't want them to behave individually. You, yes. you, want, you wanted their Ghanaianess to show, so they should yeah. form a special purpose and, vehicle. And, and to know that uh, we in Ghana, when we go to sleep, the, 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 um, the infrastructure is, is owned, controlled by Ghanaians. But did you intend to change the percentages for each of them? Because the, the suggestion people like Steve Mantia was made was that mm -hmm. that letter you wrote to Mr. Kotoan Pao. Do you have the letter? It's on social, we can put it up. Yeah, you, you can I know find what, what I just said. I don't, yes, want, so, so, I don't um, want Steve's interpretation. Yes, so uh, yeah. and if you can find the, the letter and put yeah. it up. Basically saying that it was a pretext for other people to take over the Ghanaian shareholding yeah. of PDS. So the okay. SVV was a, a pretext. Okay. No, not this one. The, the letter that Ken wrote yeah. to... Uh, but that's, you um, know, there's a lot of... Not this one. The letter that Ken wrote to uh, Steve... Um, yeah. To Akutuampa, if you have it, yeah. put it up. I mean, I, I don't... I mean, I think if Steve... If uh, Steve Mantua knows me as a person, uh, I don't have these, you know, the ulterior motives. I mean, what I said is, is what I said. How do I ensure that the Ghanaian majority shareholding does not get compromised or diluted. And I, I'm not sure. You know, then subsequently, as we, we began to rethink um, this whole PDS matter of all that came up, I began to think of, well, how can we even make this more efficient? And now we are sort of contemplating, you know, should this 51% be institutionally held? Mm -hmm. You know, pension funds, institutional shareholders, etc. Uh, an ESOP um, to employees, and then a listing on the Ghana Stock Exchange so that you have a certain democratization uh, of these shares. So if really, you know, the point of view was that one wanted to sequester it for a few people, that certainly is not a solution to that. You know, but, you know, th these are the hazards of the, of the trade that we are in, and so there will always be 
other interpretations of what we want to do. Uh, but um, for me, as, as far as I know, um, it was to ensure that we didn't lose our 51% shareholdership and further as we now begin to look at a new structure for this, uh, our clear thinking is to have, uh, you know, much more institutional shareholding, much more democratization of the share ownership, uh, and then find... So just, just the a quick point. So some people felt that between the time we found out that PDS didn't have the guarantee, yes. if we really wanted to maintain PDS, yeah. we could have found a way of getting PDS and its other partners to correct that wrong. We are talking okay. done well. We're talking Cal Bank okay. and a few other companies that they got, like Alcote okay. and Co. Essentially saying that you, 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 the, the option of termination ap appears too heavy-handed and too sudden. Draconian. Draconian, thank you. <laughs> so that you could have no, found a way of getting them to correct. Because maybe, when, maybe we could have, you know. So why did you opt not to? No, no, I said maybe okay. we could have. But um, Bernard, I mean... It's, it's easy to say, but if there's a problem with your electricity company, $3 billion of asset, um, you will look truly irresponsible. But more importantly, when during the investigations, um, the company that is purported to have given the demand actually writes to you, and your Minister of Interior goes there and confirms that they did not you know, um, write those demand guarantees. And it was Ghanaian law. You know, essentially what uh, our partners are saying is that that could have been cured or in any event, if there's a problem, you can go to the Qatari court and seek redress. I have my three billion assets and I'm depending on a court in Qatari to say that, oh yeah, they should pay me if there's a problem. That can be. In, in, in any effect, um, actually it was Ghanaian law, and we know. And, and when the person who says, um, uh, who is alleged to have um, given you the guarantee says, I don't do this type of business, you know. Um, so um, I think, you know, on the margins, you can conjecture a lot of things. But truly, Bernard, it's, 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 let, let's, let's look at it. I mean, we know what we went through with Dumso. Okay, so you've given your assets to a company that seems incapable uh, of performing or have uh, the balance sheet or the resources to be able um, for you to, to give this asset to. Do you take a decision? Is it should worth you, one should, you, should you not accept some of the responsibility for choosing them in the first place? Um, actually, I mean, the, the fact of the matter is that uh, by the time we came into government, I think... Uh, Miralco, uh, you know, was already, on board. was already on board and then they selected uh, a Ghanaian partner when we moved to, to the 51%. Um, so, yeah, I mean, there, there's always a, a bit that anybody but can But was this the only Ghanaian partner available? This, for, this, for, group, that, I, I, this, this group we put together to partner yeah, Miralco? Yeah, I think you should ask Miralco that. Are you saying you didn't have any hand in who uh, Miralco no, chose? I, I, you are I, government. I, you, 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 have, you, you had no, government had no... I mean, I'm sure government will know. You, you, you know, if, I mean, clear, if Miracle says we found some people, TG Energy, Santa Baron, Philip Ayensu and co, mm -hmm. you, 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 the only tech with you is to say, is this kosher, should we go ahead? Well, I mean, but to, to what extent do you interfere or not interfere? I mean, but it's your asset, as you just said. It is, it is <laughs> my asset, but, so but, you, Miralco, it's interference. but, but Miralco... You have, you have a valid opinion. Yes, I know, but Miralco was really the one with the balance sheet, um, the technical support, etc., etc. So one was kind of anchored in feeling secure in that. And you have to let the market play, you know. So, yeah, but, but I, I think maybe... You know, let's just put an end to it. I mean, in any decision we make from financial restructuring to energy restructuring to PDS, um, there'll be some differences of opinion. But the core issue is this is a national strategic assets. It's $3 billion. Uh, a group of people have been given a 20-year concession. You start a marriage and within three months you notice these cracks. Um, and uh, you, you have to make a decision for the people of Canada. How concerned are you about the language of the American press release 
where the same. They, they talk in paragraph three about the importance of contract sanctity mm. as essential to a conducive investment climate. Right. And I'm thinking about GIPC, you will figure out going to look for money. And there's a press statement, somebody says, you guys have canceled a contract that the American government considered to be an unwarranted termination, mm. which was valid. And so basically... Which they say was valid. Yes, so there are two things they say. They say the contract was valid and the termination was unwarranted. Mm -hmm. And they're saying for them it's important because for... I mean, we, we talk about the investment climate we create. Yeah. If our government is cancelling contracts that they consider valid, what kind of risk premium does that place on Ghana's... So as an investment destination, for example. Interesting. You, do you have um, the media review? The one that you did? Yeah, my media review budget. I, I can find it somewhere. If, you, yeah. want, you have a paragraph for me to read? Yeah, you know, there was a quotation in the, um, of MLK, uh, which was interesting. But, but the issue, I mean, why do you have law courts? Because people have differences of opinions. The Americans believe that um, um, it was, the contract was valid. We don't, uh, from what I have told you about that. You know, so that's your yeah, interpretation, and therefore it was one contract sanctity. <laughs> yes, know? that's the word. They use the word contract mm, sanctity. sanctity. Yeah, it's 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 their interpretation because they feel that the contract was valid and therefore unwarranted. Um, from what we went through, uh, we feel very strongly, and I've given you reasons um, to do that. And mm. it is my three billion assets. It's it your is, three billion. It is my country that might go, you know, uh, darkened. W would that not make your road shows a bit harder? Would that not make your? I don't think so. Because, it it, it because, wouldn't because affect because, people's no. perceptions about our. It's an honest story, in the same way in which uh, we are talking to our IPPs you know, about take or pay and therefore how best mm. um, do we structure it so that the next 25 years um, there will be some harmony and fair play in the system. Okay. Um, yeah. So what is going to, let's move forward. Yeah. How is ECG going to look like? Um, do you, are you clear in your mind what, what's going to happen next? I think the clarity that we have and um, which the president articulated to um, both uh, the president of the World Bank and the CEO of MCC was that there's no going back to private participation in this and a commitment to do that and to do that in a hurry as much as we can. Because the, the principles really underlying um, this concession was A, to eliminate the inefficiencies, um, the leakages, etc. that ECG have and also to find means of bringing capital in um, to shore up the infrastructure, to make it more efficient. Um, so, so those are um, two, two issues. You can fuse them together, um, where you have one concessionaire, or you can have um, um, a participation which ensures the efficiencies you want, and then you can have uh, different shareholders mm. uh, who are not interested in that, um, but are interested in the profitability in future to do that. Um, so our minds as investment bankers, Ministry of Finance, is thinking through such a structure and to do it quickly. Why are you using think, restrictive tendering? You know, we, we use the word restrictive tendering um, because A, we were then negotiating with the MCC to see mm -hmm. whether uh, by you could salvage it. Okay, from the, I get it. that, uh, and also looking at uh, the people um, who were shortlisted, mm -hmm. you know, in that whether that would be a process by which we could then accelerate to do that. Um, so that's what so, so now do. that the, the 190 is off, yeah, you, you have more time to do what you want. Uh, presumably, so you, you don't have to use restricted tendering. Anymore. No, no, we, we don't necessarily have to. Um, and um, but but we, we we don't want to give ourselves excessive time. We really we really want to move ahead to, to get that behind us. Yeah. The, the, the IPPs want me to ask you, in fact, they want me to put it to you. Yes. And that they should be represented and head on the private sector participation in ECG because they are, quote, product owner and key stakeholders. And that they promoted good investors to invest successfully in the generation space. Mm -hmm. They want you to 
give them consideration to be part of this post PDS conversation of mm -hmm. ECG. Mm -hmm. Can they get an answer on air from you? Yeah, that's good news. I mean, what are we looking for? We, we, we're looking um, for stable supply of electricity. Mm -hmm. We're looking for good management in this distribution um, um, component um, of this enterprise. And we are looking for capital, okay? Mm -hmm. And, you know, within the IPPs, I'm sure we can find some of these elements for them to, to participate. Um, and so as, as we draw out and invite people for conversations. I mean, that, that, that would be an easy, these are people who, or companies who in a sense, mm. you know, have passed the master to be in Ghana and have, um, have invested in Ghana. Mm. Um, so why should they not be uh, considered to, to participate? I'm going to read this? comments for you. And okay. I, there's so many, so okay. if you have an answer, you can just give it in like sentence or two. If you okay. don't, you can just ask me to move to the next one. And so this is more like a quick Q&A, knowing okay. me, knowing you. And so from Sunyai, Bernard, please ask the finance minister why there's been a whole lot of tax increment under his watch. Is that true? <laughs> That's your, is that your final answer? <laughs> well, is that true? You know, and I, I think maybe you should have asked him whether that's true. Well, I don't have a chance to communicate. Just this. <laughs> These are the comments they are saying. Like, okay, I don't think it's true. You don't I, think it's true? I, I think we, 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 we um, in the first budget, you know, uh, abolished maybe some 17 taxes. Mm. Um, uh, maybe even more recently uh, reduced the customs duties, etc. Mm. Um, so I'm, I'm not but sure. But there's a few CSTs there. Yeah, that, that, okay, so CST um, has gone up. Special petroleum uh, tax hasn't gone fully. You yeah, reduce it by like still there. there. Yeah, but it was reduced. <laughs> yeah, you remember that. No, I, 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 I think really um, um, th that is not what... what you don't is, agree. Mr. Happening. Bernard, as the finance minister, the plans government has towards, remain, towards the remaining NAPCO recruits, especially those at DRA, to boost revenue collection since this is a very important issue for the development of the nation. Yeah. Presumably, you haven't recruited all the NAPCO people you said you put in yeah. GRE. I think we, we, we are now for 5,000. We are now at 10,000. So you yeah. have a few more to go. Yeah. Another 5,000 to go. So. I pray so. You Can know, you employ them before we, end we, of year? I doubt it. Um, but I think the efficiencies that we need in terms of deploying the 5,000 are going to be important for us then to move on. Yeah. Good evening, Bernard. Please ask Finance Minister to... Tell him, not ask, tell him to pay youth in afforestation allowances. Thank you, Big J and Akutia. Yeah. So I'm telling you to pay them. Thank you. <laughs> we we'll, we'll like to do that. Actually, Thank there's you. a couple more on youth. Please ask Honorable Kenoferata that between him and Sir John, our CEO, who is keeping our youth in afforestation monies? Seems to be a pretty serious situation. Are I you aware of so. this? Oh, oh, yeah, I am aware. I mean, Bernard, we, we were um, targeting um, some 15... Um, thousand um, youth for that program mm. and it ballooned to 45,000 oh. and that you know uh, created some hiccups but you know I think we've been we've been so we've you have 45,000 youth in afforestation yeah and 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 I mean so the, that's 30,000 beyond your the, plan yeah but then you know I mean um, people who have jobs you know um, wow. it's a difference for decency and so we are finding ways to make sure you look that, for money uh, and pay them we keep we keep so you can't give them. me a date yeah. um Mohammed from Takradi, Ben, please ask Honorable Ken of Riata, what is he doing about the aggrieved customers of Gold Coast Financial Management of Mr. Kwesi Indu? Mm -hmm. Very good. I mean, I think um, um, Kwesi Indu Gold Coast is like, you know, quite a number of um, SNLs that we have. We, we, we had issues um, with, with the bank um, and therefore do, did not feel that it qualified, you know, when we changed uh, the capital requirements for it, but made it to the SNL stage. Uh, and then as the, the months went on and we came through to the SNLs, um, also did not meet uh, master. Uh, and so we did. So. Um, the receivers are supposed to be doing... doing no, so let me work. clarify this. This is, let me explain. This is um, Gold Coast, not um, the bank that became the SNL. So okay. this, this is under the uh, SEC. Okay. So I'm, I'm talking about a fund management company, okay. not the okay. bank not that became... Bank, not GN. Yes, not GN. So this person is asking in relation to the fund management company, Gold Coast, no. which we understand a lot of people have had their money locked up, yeah. which the um, SEC... SEC's 
supposed to be responsible for. Right, yeah. So SEC has a program uh, which will be similar to, to, to the banks. Um, with regards to especially what to do about a number of fund managers um, who also, you know, have not done what they were supposed to do in terms of meeting requirements and exposures, etc. Mm. Um, and, and that will have to be resolved. Kobe wants me to ask you, good evening, good evening Bernard. I, am, I own a small Ghanaian company that employs 65 Ghanaians mm -hmm. and we have pushed for tax exemption until now they say I don't qualify. But we use a Chinese firm and within a week that, that firm has been given the tax exemption but we are all in the same industry and we do the same work. We do the same work. Can Ministry of Finance tell me what goes into tax exemption? This is Kobe. Mm -hmm. Yeah, actually, I, I mean, that's a very interesting question because, I mean, one of uh, Mr. Grant's issues is, is given the same accommodation to, to Ghanaian investors. And, and I wouldn't mind, you know, um, Kobe getting in touch for me to actually see the process he went, went through. through and why there was a denial, and why this uh, Kobe, this foreign company. Died. Today is your lucky day. Mm -hmm. Send me your number. I will forward it to the minister and his people. Mm -hmm. They will look into it because this, he says this is absurd yeah. for you not to get. You employ 65 Ghanaians. A Chinese company within a week got the exemption you didn't get. He will look into it. Yeah. His guys are here. I'll give it to them. Good evening, Bernard. Please ask finance minister about the receiver for the microfinance and savings and loans. Why didn't they hand them over to a bank like GCB or CBG so they are taken care of smoothly like was done for the investor banks? A lot of people are frustrated and angry about the way their funds are being handled by the receiver. And why allow the same receiver who handled the microfinance to handle the savings and loans? Looks like more education ought to be done before implementation. People are not happy with the receiver at all. Mm. Equia in Lashibi. Mm. Okay. Comment. Um, the, the, the banks... Um are involved, and I think CBG uh, may be uh, at the center um, of, of this one. Um, uh, I mean, I, we have, and, and um, one of my deputies was reporting to me um, that on Monday he's having a meeting with the receiver to really see what it is, because the, the monies were placed, you know, Bank of Ghana will not do this, Ministry of Finance has not paid. Mm. Uh, but it seems that the take has been quite slow, which is quite surprising. Um, so on the one level, uh, a number of people are saying they can get through. Mm. On the other level, um, the receiver seems to be showing that people coming in to take money. Is the hole the receiver is dealing with bigger than you thought? No, not yet, at least. It hasn't come back now. to you to say that no, the hole Because, is you know, quite a bit of the money is still there. Okay. Um, with them. Yeah. People say, can you find out from the finance minister why they introduced the CST tax if the Kelney GVG contract was to ensure they were prudent enough in collecting taxes and make more money. So why the increase in tax and how much has been accrued after the contract was signed? This is Kelny GVG. This is K in Accra. Yeah. I mean, I, I wouldn't know the details of Kelny GVG, but um, the issue of increasing from, I think, 6% to 9% or so, um, is really to, you, 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 I mean, we all have seen the increase in, in usage. And when you begin to, to, to tax, you look for tax handles that enables everybody to participate in this, and, and that's, and I think it's an effective. Let's run through a few questions. I'll yeah. finally ask you what we should expect in the budget, because it's in two weeks, and I know you have to go and work on that. Yeah. Final few questions. Bernard, what is the state of the two billion Chinese butter? When is the money hitting our account? This has no name. There's another one on that. Can you find out from the minister what happened to Ghana deal with China on the road projects? Thank mm -hmm. you. Great. You know, um, I think we, we, we successfully went through four lots mm -hmm. um, uh, being being cleared. Uh, and so um, roads in the western and central region, um, some activity in Ashanti, Tamale Interchange, and I believe um, the part of the eastern corridor mm -hmm. um, going north of Hohoi. You know, it's, it's going All to right. be kicked in. Uh, Bernard, according to State of Ghanaian Economy, ESA, 50% of Ghana's total debt stock is owned by foreigners and denominated in foreign currency. Ministers should convince us or tell us why we shouldn't be worried about this. Um, I'm, I'm not sure. The, the worry being... That it, it can put pressure on our exchange rate because if you have to pay... If the money was city denominated debt, yeah. that's pretty cool. But if it's foreign denominated, it put pressure on your local currency, among True. other things. Yeah, and, and you also have an environment in which... 
um, you may be paying what now for 14 or 15 or 16 percent, uh, which puts pressure uh, on you, or maybe eight percent in the short term. So it's really a balancing act if, if you look. And so you usually have. Um, uh, the foreign investors in the long end of the of the curve, and then the Ghanaians. Um, but but are you not worried that we spend about a third? In fact, from according to ISE, forty two percent of revenues is spent on paying interest. And I have a graph to show this. If you can. No show no it. no, it's, it's it's true. Uh, the, yes. the worrisome issue is that between um, compensation wages um, also, and then our interest payments. Uh, almost half of um, um, your your revenues uh, are consumed, and and that's uh, and that's a true um, that that's a true worry. Um, uh, we, we've we've um, uh, you know when we we came uh, into government, uh, we were uh, able to correct the yield curve and elongate it so mm. that it gave us um, some fiscal space. Mm. Um, I think it is time. To look. So, so look at that on the screen. Speed is yeah. pretty precarious. I, I, I live it. So you live I it. Know. <laughs> I know it. So we are, we are beginning to, to, to look at that whole bucket um, to see whether we can come up with a restructuring um, that, that will ease right. it a bit. Minister, will you announce a reduction in taxes on LPG in the next budget? <clears throat> uh, it's a question a listener wants me to ask you. No. You won't? Oh, why? <laughs> Yeah. I mean, I, I think it, is, it should be um, a pretty stable year uh, in which uh, we have, you know, sort of a, a sustainable, stable mm. and secure environment um, as we sort of build a platform mm. for what I believe should be the <coughs> private sector led and inward investments. This is the final budget. Okay, let me correct it. This is the budget for the final year of mm -hmm. Akufuado's first term. Right. If he wants to do a second term, right. he will be voted in. Yeah. The IMF says, don't overspend mm -hmm. because you have made macroeconomic gains that you have to maintain. Right. People are clamoring for roads. They are clamoring for buildings. Mm -hmm. Napco people want work to do. Right. What are you going to do? Um, I, I think... Um we, we can't uh, compromise on sort of the strong fiscal discipline, you know. I don't think we can. Um, and then a, also a strong policy coordination between us, you know, and, and the central bank. And we really need to maintain, you know, policy consistency and credibility. Mm -hmm. um, so, 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 so that's there. I mean, I think my excitement is that we've come really far. And whether we as Ghanaians can appreciate how far we have come, and also to kill this um, monkey on our back about election year cycles, uh, and, and that's where one will be pushing for. Uh, because Bernard, if you see, you know, sort of the effort we as Ghanaians have made, mm. including. Um, um, the work we have put into the banking sector, the energy sector, education, health also. Mm. It also then um, puts us as citizens on a back foot which says that government is indeed doing something and, and what is my part um, mm. in this transformation that President Akufuado seeks. Um, so, so my hope and my excitement is that we'll have people come along with us to say 2020 is going to be a stable and good year. And that platform um, to be able to then begin to get sort of real growth because we are now going to be a manufacturing export-led economy is where it's So it means your, your, your work, Akufuado's work wouldn't have ended by end of 2020. It he would, he would need a second term. It can't. He would need a second term to yeah, finish. And I pray that Ghanaians will do that for him. Okay, so in two weeks time, we'll listen to the full budget yes. and hope it gives us whatever you, 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 you are, you are yeah. promising. Thank you for being on the show. Thank you. I appreciate it. Thank you it. very much. Thank We've been talking to Ken Oforiata, Minister for Finance, mm -hmm. and he's presenting his budget in two weeks' time. We'll be there live to break it down so you get more information about where next year is going to head. We hope he gives us a good Christmas, if for nothing at all. My name is Ben Arable. Thank you for watching the show. Mm -hmm. Stay with CTTV. See you next time. Bye-bye. Thank you.